Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial. Now we're going to study the naive base classifier. It's important to know that for to really understand this model, it is required to know the basics on probability theory. So make sure you understand the essential theory in probabilities before jumping into this tutorial. For example, assume we have this training set. As we can see, this is information about restaurants. We have first a column telling the area of where the restaurant is located. These are different cities in, in Chile. Santiago, Macul, and Vitacura are the possible locations. Then we have the column telling if the restaurant has parking inside or not. Then we have the price telling basically if the restaurant is has a high price or a low price. And the food type that could be Italian barbecue or Japanese. So assume that this is the class, the price. In other words, this is what we want to predict with a model. So for example, we can ask what is the price of a restaurant that is located in Santiago with parking and with Japanese food? The blue words are the input variables. We can see them here in the vector. And then the question is, what is the price given this input vector? In other words, if we model this with probabilities, it could be what is the probability of the price given the vector x or the probability of the price given that we know that the location is Santiago, that there is parking and the type of food is Japanese. The main theorem we are going to use to perform classification here is the Bayes theorem. This is the equation of the Bayes theorem. We're going to see some intuitions soon. So we can see that the probability of a variable A given another variable B or a set of variables, it is the expression in the right side. We basically is the same as the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. So using the same theorem, we can, instead of A, use the class we want to predict and B will be all the variables that describe X, the input data. So in order to perform classification, we're going to have to calculate these three terms, the probability of the vector given the class times the probability of the class divided by the probability of the vector. So here we're going to see an intuition of this theorem. Imagine we want to figure out the probability that a given client buys a Game Boy, given that we know that the client is an old lady. According to the Bayes theorem, the result can be calculated from the expression in the right side. The first term is telling us out of the clients that we know already that they bought a Game Boy, how many of them were all ladies in easy words. This term is called the likelihood function and it's giving us a sense of the degree of fit we have between the clients that bought a Game Boy and the clients that are all ladies. But this is not all. Imagine that out of the clients that bought a Game Boy, a huge percentage were all ladies. That is an indicator that this probability should be high. So the higher this term, the higher is this probability. But this is not all. It must be balanced somehow. Why? Because imagine that this calculus was done over just a few lines of data. In other words, very few clients bought a Game Boy. Imagine it's worth just 10 purchases. So it means that even though eight out of 10 purchases were done by an old lady, it's very few cases. So we are relying in a too small sample. So we need to balance that. And this is the prior distribution. So in case we have very few cases in where clients bought a Game Boy, this prior probability is going to be low and it's going to balance this case. So in other words, it's saying, okay, high percentage of your clients that bought a Game Boy were all ladies, but given that in very few cases we sell Game Boys, you should consider that information into the probability of purchase of this item. And the last term, is the marginal likelihood. And this term is basically normalizing this equation to make this a valid probability distribution. In general, we cannot directly calculate this term. We need to marginalize it and sum over all the possible items in order to estimate this value. Don't worry if you didn't understand the mathematical terms or names for these elements. We are going to see them later. But the core of this slide is to make you to have an intuition of what each of these terms are doing. 
So this one is measuring the degree of fit of your data and your prediction. And this term is balancing with information you know before you see the client. Now, using the same formula, but translated into the classification world, we have, as we mentioned before, that in order to classify a new instance, we need to calculate the probability of the class given the instance. And using the base rule, we have this term in this side. Don't forget that X is in general a vector of dimensionality of size D, right? So here we have several variables involved, same thing here and here. So let's talk a little bit about the cost of each of the terms we need. So this is what we need, right? Is the posterior probability of the class given the, the data. This term sometimes is expensive because as you may notice, you need the distribution of X that is a multivariate vector. Imagine you have a data set with 10 variables, you're gonna need a distribution over 10 variables given the class. So depending on the training set, this term could be expensive or not. This term is in general more affordable because you just need to calculate the prior probability of the class. For example, from the training set, you could just count the amount of elements in each of the class values to have an estimation of the probability of the class a priori. And this term is in general very expensive. Why? Because the way to calculate that term in the denominator is by marginalizing out all the possible values of the class, right? So you need to condition in the class, multiply by its probability, and sum over all the class values. So this term here can get very expensive. So what is naive base? Well, naive base is the simplest approach to approximate the equation mentioned in the previous slide. The term probability of x given the class, which was the, the likelihood function term, it is simplified by assuming that all the variables x are independent given the class. So in other words, this term is going to be replaced by the product of the probability of each of the variables given the class. So if, for example, x had 10 dimensions, we will replace one multidimensional distribution over 10 variables by the product of 10 unidimensional distributions, one per variable. This is a very strong assumption, right? So what is the intuition here? Well, we definitely are losing a lot of information with this approximation, right? Because in most of the databases, this is not true. I mean, if you replace a multidimensional distribution as the product of several unidimensional distributions, you're going to lose all the interactions among these variables. But in naive Bayes, even though we are making that assumption, recall that we only need to solve the classification problem. So if we notice that with the training set, we are having good classification performance, even though we are making this assumption, then our assumption is okay. Don't forget that in this model in particular, we are not pursuing to capture the best distribution of X given the class. We just want to approximate it in such a way that we can solve a different problem, the classification problem. Of course, if we realize that the naive base classification is not performing good for a specific training set, it means that this assumption is really affecting the classifier as well. And we shouldn't use this model for classification. The previous assumption allows us to solve this classification problem with this approximation. So we can see that here, this term which is a multidimensional distribution, gets replaced by a product of several unidimensional distributions. And then the problem becomes much cheaper. On top of that, this term in the denominator, we will see that it's not even necessary for our calculations. Because to perform classification, we just need to pick the class that has higher posterior probability. And to do that, we just need to compare this probability for different values of the class. And all of them will have the same denominator. So we just need to compare them just by looking at the numerator. 